Okay, <clears throat> so we're in a sermon series called In the Dark No More. There's a lot of things that people have been in the dark to, a lot of bad teachings from the church that are not biblical, and this sermon series has been to show what Scripture says, not what Pastor Jay says. I hope that I've done a good job at letting the Word answer what it says. So we've talked about some pretty controversial topics. The first week, you know, we talked about what happens when you die. And we let the Bible tell us what happens. Then that week after that, we talked about how could a loving God send somebody to hell. And we learned that He does not. That's your decision. Last week, we talked about judgment. What does it look like? We learned that there are two different judgments. There's a judgment for the believer for rewards. And there'll be a judgment for unbeliever for punishment. Um, this week, we're going to talk about just in my experience in ministry. Can you turn that music down for me? In my experience, probably one of the most misunderstood topics so much so that a lot of people just don't even talk about it. It's also a topic that literally denominations separate and form over. And when I say it, some of you are going to be like, what? But I'm telling you, when we get into it, you'll realize it. So today we're going to talk about the rapture and the second coming. And yes, they are two different things. And we're going to show you, I'm going to show you in Scripture that they are two different things. And I'm going to show you what the Bible says. And I'm also going to let you read along the words of Jesus and what he said. Have you ever just had somebody that, you know, come up to you and told you something and they're like, I don't know if I can trust that. But then there's that one person that, that tells you something and you're like, you can take that one to the bank. You ever got people like that? Well, I'm telling you right now, when Jesus says it, you can take it to the bank. You can take it there. So we're going to jump right into this. And uh, because I have a lot of scripture to read today. And some people may ask, why do you have a lot of scripture to read? Because this topic is a, a, an answer. We answer this topic with Jesus. And I'm not going to give you my opinion today. Okay, let me just, let me just set this up for you real quick. This is not a message for me to get my points and views across. I'm just going to let the word tell you. And here's what I want to encourage everybody. And I want everybody to please hear me when I say this. I'm a man. And I can miss it. This is why it's so important that you go home and you pull your Bible out. And you read it for yourself. And you ask God to help you understand it. Okay? And if there's something that you don't understand, all you have to do is just come talk to me. I'm not that guy that gets all huffed and puffed. I'll sit there and just have the conversation with you. I'll show you in Scripture why I believe this. And you know what? You may teach me something. I'm not, a, I'm not above that. There's, somebody, there's actually people in this room that has showed me things in the Bible. Like, oh, wow, I didn't see it like that. We're a family. Family helps each other out. So just know that this is not a message to drive Jason's point in. Because the reality to it is, is the Lord's going to come back when he chooses. All right? So let's dive into it. Point number one, the rapture of the church. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and try to answer as many questions that I've been asked as possible. And let me just say this real quick. This is been pretty amazing to me because everybody always asks me pastor how was your week this week let me just tell you a little bit of how my week was this week so for the past I'd say three or four weeks I've been I try to stay a few weeks ahead of my, my messages just to have them in my spirit you know and uh, when I then I'll come together and I'll with the Lord's help put them together but just this week and I really hadn't told hardly anybody that I was gonna talk about this I have received a certified letter in the mail from someone anonymous telling me that I'm wrong about this topic, that Jesus himself told me to write the letter. 
but gave me no scripture. Yeah, I also had a woman who is demon possessed know the person, randomly send me videos on this topic that are so crazy and such a twist of God's word. I have had, my wife will tell you, I, I, I forgot it this morning because we were in a hurry. How many's got a young family with kids and you got to be somewhere? You just running out the door just to make it on time and I left it. But I was going to bring it. But I have had all these things come against me and I knew then we're going to have to let this one fly. Because I was cautious, conscious, uh, cautious excuse me, of saying, ah, maybe I shouldn't talk about this. But when the attack started coming, I knew the Lord wants me to share it. So you need to know some things. There is a rapture and there is a second coming and those are two completely different events. And I'm gonna show you in scripture clear where that is, okay? So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the rapture of the church, okay? We need to understand that. What is it? What is the rapture of the church? I put the answer on the screen. This is, the, look, if you get your Bible software, you can pull this up for yourself. Listen to this, here's the answer. An event. So we need to know it is an event that happens that is private between the church and Jesus. It also means a departure. Look at this next one right here. To escape from the wrath of the Lamb, to receive an appointment. When I saw that, my wife was in the room with me. We were looking this up and she was like, oh, it amazed both of us when we saw this. Here's what this is saying. It's just like you have an appointment to the doctor. You don't go to the doctor until there's an appointment, right? And then what happens? You sign in and then eventually someone comes out and says, come on back. You are called to an appointment. And I'm telling you, I'm going to show you in scripture, literally, there will be a shout that will call you to an appointed time. And this is good news. This word at the bottom is the uh, Greek word, and I broke it down in syllables so that you can read it, but it's paralambano. Paralambano is the Greek word for the rapture. It means to be taken, to receive. Okay, now I'm going to show you scripture that has that word in it. You ready? You may not even know this scripture to mean this, but here's what it means. John chapter 14. Verses 1 through 3. Hold on one second. They're going to turn you on. All right, go ahead. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. That's it. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, listen, I will come again and receive you receive. to myself. Para Lombano. That where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus is saying, I'm going to get the house built and the house cleaned up so that I can come back and para Lombano. I can take you and receive you. <laughs> Wake them up, Lord. Now, I want to give you some verses of Scripture that actually does displays the rapture and how it happens. You ready? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. And I'm going to interrupt to explain to you, but go ahead. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, mm -hmm. even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Mm -hmm. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means perceive those who are asleep. Is there more? Is that all of it? 
Okay. So I want you to understand what's happening here. He is explaining to you the rapture and it's about to take place. Now I want you to look also in Luke chapter 17 and this is going to be Jesus himself say this. Keep going. Luke 17 verse 24. Hang on one second. We okay. We ain't got nothing but time. Luke 17, verse 24. There it is. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under mm-hmm. heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. Okay, I want to explain that to you. Because it's just telling you the Son of Man will be in his day. For as lightning that flashes out of one part of heaven and shines to another part under the heaven. It will literally be like a lightning bolt through the sky. The rapture happened. That's what Je- they asked Jesus. What will the rapture be like? Jesus just said, it'll be like lightning flashing. And it'll be a private matter between me and the church. We'll know what's going on. Everybody else in the room, they'll just see people disappear and they'll blame it that aliens took them. Because they ain't going to have a clue what happened. Look right here. Second th- this is a good one. I'm going I'm to show you something here. It's important. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us Mm -hmm. as though the day of christ had come yep let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first that's a big word right there i'm gonna explain it keep going and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, this verse right here is a very misunderstood verse and it has a lot to do with all the translations we have now. Okay, not the original translation, but a lot of our newer translations, words get replaced So I want to explain this to you. So Jesus is talking about, let me set this whole thing up for you because this is a very important topic right here. So you need to understand why 2 Thessalonians is even wrote. Because the Apostle Paul wrote 1 Thessalonians telling everybody about the rapture and how it's going to happen. Well, after he wrote it, and, and they say it was a matter of two or three weeks, and then he's wrote this one. They say this, they said that people were writing fake letters and signing them, the Apostle Paul, telling people that the rapture had already took place and you're in the tribulation. And people were panicking. I mean, absolutely just going crazy. That's why he says, let me comfort you. I do not want you to be deceived here. And then he says something very important. He said, that day will not come until there is a great falling away. I want everybody to write that down. And I want you to do your best to go home. And I want you to study this word because I'm going to tell you what it means. And I want you to see it for yourself. You know what it means? Until the rapture. Okay, let me tell you why they replaced that word. Because... They are explaining what happens when the rapture takes place. This is talking about all the Jews who fall away because they realize he left them. And there's the great falling away that takes place. All the Jews will say, hey, we're God's chosen people and you left us. For all those Gentiles. You took the Gentiles, but you left us. 
Here's what I'm telling you. The Lord doesn't see us anymore as Jew and Gentile. The scripture tells us we are all of one blood. So it's very important that you understand who he's coming to get. Okay? He's not coming to get people just because of their name. He's coming to get people who are lovers. He's coming to get a bride. Who comes and gets a bride that doesn't love them? Then, here's what, here's what Paul was telling them. Let me tell you how you know this is not the rapture. Because there's not a great falling away that's took place. The rapture hasn't happened yet. And this man has not been revealed. If you keep reading about the man of lawlessness, it's the Antichrist. Okay? If you keep reading, it tells you that there is one who restrains him from going into power. You know who the one who restrains him is? The Holy Spirit. Do you know when the Holy Spirit no longer restrains him? When the rapture takes place. Because he's out of here. There's no more need for him. His responsibility, his main function is to do what? To draw people to Jesus. Jesus is not here. He has took his bride and he's up there having a wedding feast. And the Holy Spirit's up there singing a song. So this is what's going on here. The Apostle Paul is rewriting a letter saying, hey, let me calm you down and tell you it ain't happened yet. You know what's crazy about this? This happened over two and a half, almost 3,000 years ago, and we're still dealing with the same issue now. I have got people, and I'm going to get in here and I'm going to show you this clearly. We have people that have told me that we're in the middle of the tribulation, that the sixth seal is about to be broken. What that tells me is, is you have not read the book of Revelation. And you don't even understand what the tribulation is. But we're going to find out in just a minute. Okay? Here's another word from Jesus. Y'all ready? Matthew chapter 24, verses 27 and 28. For as the lightning flashes in the east and shines to the west, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. There it is. There's his coming that fast. Did you hear it? Keep going. Just as the gathering of vultures shows there is a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. Yeah, another translation says it this way. Has anybody, let me just paraphrase for you. Has anybody ever seen a buzzard fly in the sky soaring around? What does that tell you? Jesus is saying, just like that, you'll know when the rapture takes place. That's what he's saying. He's giving a metaphor. There is also another thing that happens simultaneously when the rapture takes place. And I do want to be clear with you and, and tell you that the Bible clearly teaches that Jesus comes and takes the church. And when Jesus comes and takes the church, you know what happens next? Immediately it happens. You know what it's called? My second point, the wrath of the Lamb. The wrath of the Lamb. Let me, let, me, let me recap on something for you. We talked a few weeks back. There is uh, times that we have to deal with in the Bible. We have the first time called ages past. That's when all the angels were created. Things like that. We don't really have a lot of exact detail of it. We just get pieces of it in Scripture. Now we're in the time called the age of grace. Where we're under His grace. When the rapture takes place, it starts another time, the time of wrath. This is where grace no longer reigns on the earth. Jesus removes it. And Jesus himself is the lamb. And he will come and he is the first one that brings and pours out the wrath. And I'm going to show it to you. 
So here's some things we need to understand because a lot of people miss, don't understand Bible language has its own words and you have to understand it. The wrath of the Lamb is the tribulation. The wrath of the Lamb is the tribulation. And it's not on the screen, but if you're taking notes, Revelations chapter 6 all the way through 18 is the wrath of the Lamb. 6 through 18. Now let me tell you this. You need to understand that Revelation is a book of prophecy. It is not in chronological order. You can read one chapter and then go into the next chapter and it's talking about something that has already happened. So you can't just read it chapter, next chapter as a sequence of events in order. Some of the chapters are, but most of them are not. Let me explain to you what's happening. John is on an island and he is worshiping God and he goes out in the spirit. And the Lord reveals heaven to him. It's coming to him so quickly. I just, we really can't even fully imagine what is happening here. It's a supernatural thing that's taking place. Like, a, like the knowledge of God, if he just gives us a touch of it, I bet we'd explode. And he has got John in a vision, a revelation, and telling him how it's going to end, but also telling him how some things started. If you look in Revelation, this side, in Revelations 12, he tells John how Satan tried to kill Mary and Jesus. He also tells him how war happened in heaven and how Satan was threw down. That's halfway through the tribulation if you put it in order. So that tells you it's not in order because that stuff already happened. So you can't read it. You have to understand prophecy and you have to read the word and understand it and then it'll all mesh together. Okay? So here we go. We're going to get good now. The tribulation, there is the wrath of God. Let me show it to you. Revelations chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, mm -hmm. and the stars of heaven fell to earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Mm -hmm. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Yep. Keep going. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? This is the most horrific moment that this world will ever see. And it lasts a little over seven years. Um, I'm now going to, uh, we're going to jump in there now because there is a great divide. Okay, and that is this. There is a divide in the church body and theology. And I'm not going to give you my theology, I'm going to tell you what Jesus says. Okay, but let me explain to you what the divides are. There are some people who believe in pre-tribulation. And what that means is, is that Jesus comes, gets the church, and we do not experience any of the tribulation. Then there are those who believe in mid-tribulation. And that is, we go through the first three and a half years, and then God takes us out of here. Okay, then there are those who believe in a post-tribulation. And that is the people who believe that the believers do not get a pass, that they go completely through the tribulation, and God supernaturally protects them through it. Okay, and then at the end of the tribulation, Jesus comes and gets them. Um, <clears throat> and then there are the people who are kind of like the mid-trib, 
tribulation people and they believe that we will be here for the first part of the tribulation and it will be peace and it will be a good time and then after the three and a half years of peace and a good time Jesus is going to come get us okay those are pretty much what several different people believe churches believe so what does the Bible teach okay I just want to encourage you I'm not here before I go any further I'm not here to argue with nobody I want to explain something to you and I'm gonna share my heart with you real quick for many years I've taught this wrong and I've had to repent for it I'm gonna have to stand before Jesus And I will be judged because I taught it wrong. I know he's going to give me mercy, but I didn't put in the effort to read it for myself. I listened to somebody on TV tell me. I listened to a pastor tell me. This is why I'm telling you, you need to go home and read this for yourself. This is why I'm going to give you the scripture. So what does the Bible teach? So when I tell you the answer to it, I'm going to show you and... This is, no, this, is no, this is no topic for us to separate over. If you see this differently, great. It's no different than somebody liking a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and somebody putting bananas on it. Okay, me personally, I'm not going to put the bananas on peanut butter. I prefer mayonnaise instead. Amen? Amen. We got a few people saved in here. Yeah. So here we go. So what does the Bible teach? The Bible teaches, and I'm going to prove it to you, that Jesus comes and gets his bride before the tribulation. It's a pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? And here's why this has been difficult for me, because I was always taught that God comes, Jesus comes and gets us at the end. Because who are we to escape the wrath? Okay. Hey, I'm preaching over here, baby. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I know. I'm messing with her. This is what was going through my mind. Who who am I that I will escape these things? Then also, I was always taught that preachers who teach in the pre-tribulation just are afraid to offend their their congregation and they just need to build them up and make them like a marine soldier so they can just push through the tribulation that we'll endure it but God will have grace on us in that season Um, I'm going to prove this to you but I just want to submit some things to you there is no part in the tribulation where it's peace The very first seal that is broken, and you can read this in Revelation 6, Jesus himself goes out. And it says he goes out to pour wrath and to cause war. Then he brings a few angels with him, and each angel that breaks the seal and comes out, a third of the earth is killed. We just read in chapter 6 where the mountains are moved out of their places and it was like the sky rolled up like a curtain. And what did the people say? They were begging for the mountains to fall on. Okay, does that sound peaceful? Also, I want to submit to you, who in their right mind of a loving husband would want to come back for a beat, tattered, and defeated bride. It's okay. I'm telling you what, you know what one of the most exciting things that I look forward to on my wedding day? To see my wife dressed up and beautiful. And to see her walk down that aisle. Why would Jesus not want that? Now I'm going to prove it to you. You ready? 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. What is the tribulation? The wrath of the Lamb. Ready? Here we go. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you. 
and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come the wrath to come that is pre wrath I'm gonna keep going this is Jesus talking to the church in Revelation so we're in the same book Revelation chapter 3 verses 7 through 11 listen to this write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia this is the message from the one who is holy and true the one who has the key of David praise the Lord what he opens no one can close mm -hmm. and what he closes no one can open I know all the things you do and I have opened a door for you that no one can close Ooh. yeah you have little strength yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me keep going Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love. Ah, look at that. That's the great falling away. Keep going. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. Mm. Amen. All right, and let me just put the nail in the coffin. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11. First Thessalonians chapter five, verses nine through 11. For God did not appoint us to wrath. Say it again. For God did not appoint us to wrath. One more time. For God did not appoint us to, to wrath. go in the tribulation. Okay, keep going. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another. Okay. Listen to me. Miss Melissa, unfortunately, you're going to have to go through the tribulation, but be comforted. You're going to be comforted? There's going to be a great wrath of the Lord coming. You're probably going to die probably in the first day, but I want to edify you and comfort you and tell you you're going to be okay. That don't comfort you, does it? Not at all. Okay. Now, you should have saw her face. She's like, yeah. Why is he saying comfort one another? Because we don't go through it. This is the gift of being a believer. Jesus did not appoint us to go through it. Now, I'm going to let Jesus himself, because that was the Apostle Paul, now let Jesus himself tell you. You ready? Luke chapter 21, verses 34 through 36. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. All right, let me just, let me just point something out to you. Two things. Number one, he said it would come like a snare. Who, who's ever done snare hunt before? A snare is a trap. No one knows that they've been snared until it's too late because it come unexpected. Okay? So I want to point out to you, in my opinion, the most important part. What did Jesus tell us to pray for here? That we would escape. Escape. 
What are we escaping? He's talking about the wrath. Go read it for yourself. Why would Jesus himself say, pray that you escape it if we don't escape it? Let's keep going. I'm going to drive it in. I'm going to let the word tell you. Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 27. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. So you can go to the next slide. The next verse, but I want to tell you something. How many has ever been in that place before where you're like, God, I wish you'd just hurry up and come back? That's what he's saying. You will long for the, that day to come. He's, they, they all understand this. They all understand that he's coming back to get them. And they're praying. And Jesus has told them, pray that you escape it. Now look here. Keep going. For as the lightning that flashes the out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. What day? Okay. All right. Here we go. But he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah. That is so important. So it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Okay, listen. This is Jesus himself saying this. He's saying the rapture will be like lightning in the sky. But before that happens, I must be killed. But he also said what? It will be like in the days of Noah. Who knows the story of Noah? Noah, if you don't know, he is the one God told to build an ark. The whole world was corrupt. But Noah went and preached and said, repent, because the wrath is coming down and it's going to destroy this earth. But God's made provision. God's gave you a way of escape. But you got to come get on the boat. And Jesus himself said, it's going to be just like that when I come back. That I am the way of escape. <laughs> and you're still going to reject me. And the door is going to close. And it'll be too late. And then literally all hell is going to break loose. Luke chapter 17, verses 28 through 30. Look at this. This is Jesus too. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Okay, so it'll be just like the day that he destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. So, so, so you need to understand, people say, but wait a minute, it says they're eating, they're drinking, they're doing all that. Listen, those are things of the future that we enjoy, we plan for. We get married, why? To have a family. Okay, all these things. These are times of celebration. Jesus is saying, everybody going to be out here celebrating, thinking everything's peace, safety. That's what 1 Thessalonians 5 starts off with. Peace, safety. But it'll come like a snare. You'll be in there having you a good old time, living the way you want to live. And out of nowhere, that door shut. And brimstone's going to come out the sky. Meteors. Balls of fire, massive earthquakes, famine, 
I heard somebody tell me today, he goes, man, I believe we're in the, the uh, I think he said the fifth or sixth seal. I said, how do you believe that? He said, man, it said a loaf of bread will cost a day's wage. I said, a loaf of bread ain't a hundred and something dollars. I know we feel like it is. How much is it? Like four or five bucks, depending on if you get the good stuff. Let me encourage you with something. If you only make five dollars a day, please see me after church. I'm going to help you. And I don't mean that funny. Okay? We're not there. The Bible has clearly told us we escaped that. And then this is in a whole nother chapter. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. I know I'm giving you a lot of verses, but I want the word to tell you. But on that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Yep. But as the days of Noah were, mm -hmm. so also will be the coming of the so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Yep. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, mm -hmm. marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them away so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. This is the rapture. Watch it. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So let me explain that to you. Because a lot of people have always said this saying, and it is in error. And that is this. He's going to come like a thief in the night. He is. But he's not coming like a thief to us. Because it tells us that those in the dark, he'll be like a thief in the night. But we are of the light. We may not know the hour, but we'll know he's coming. So be ready. Okay? I don't want anybody in this room to just think, oh, I have no idea. I'm just going to live how I want to live. Don't do that. Because I also read to you that you can lose your crown. That's why we can't be playing church. That's why you can't come in here and get your shout on and go out there and live like Sodom and Gomorrah. You'll lose it. You'll lose your way of escape. This is a serious thing. So now I want to talk about another topic that's a very controversial topic, and that is that the Bible tells us that no believers will be spared in the tribulation. Because some of the tribulation talks about saints that are in it. Okay, and we're going to explain that. But I want to let you know, post-tribulation people believe that we will go through it and we'll be spared. I'm going to show you in Scripture where none of us is. Nobody that goes through the tribulation, no believer will be spared. Okay, you ready? Here it goes. <clears throat> Revelation 13, verse 5 through 7. And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Mm -hmm. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Yep. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Okay. So, he, so, so this is the Antichrist, and he was given authority to destroy all of them. We're going to keep going. I'm going to keep going with you. Revelations 20, verse 4. This is the, the, we're going to get to the second coming. This is the second coming, but I want to show you something in it first. Go ahead. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the beast or his image 
and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So you're going to get your head cut off. You will experience the millennial reign. But you will be killed. Why will I be killed if I miss the Let me explain to you. You don't want to miss the rapture. Okay? If you miss the rapture, here's something very important you need to know. Jesus death, burial, and resurrection will not save you. You know what will save you? You'll have to give your life now. The time of grace that we're in, Jesus gave his life. When he descends, that time is over. Now you'll have to give your life. But you know what? It ain't as easy as walking up and saying, I'll follow Jesus. And they cut your head off. For 42 months, they're going to torture you. You will be tortured. Then they'll kill you. I promise you it's much easier to accept Jesus now. Take my word for that. Now let me go to Old Testament because Daniel's going to prophesy these things. <clears throat> um, let's go to, hey, I want to skip the uh, Daniel 11. I want to go down to Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 and 24. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, this is talking king, about the right tribulation. Go ahead. A king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. They're all destroyed. No believer survives the tribulation. Power is given over to the Antichrist and he kills every one of them. Every one of them. I've got four more scriptures right here I can read you. So, if all the believers go in the rapture, who are the saints in the tribulation? Because that's a great question. So if there are saints in the tribulation, how do they get there? If you don't hear anything else I tell you today, pay attention to me. <laughs> there are people that will play church. They will hear the gospel. And they'll just go live their life they want to. And it'll happen like a snare. And then they'll realize... Oh my God, it was real and I missed it. With that understanding, I want you to know why Jesus said this now. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That is Jesus telling people that go to church every Sunday. That is Jesus saying to people who come in here, lift their hands in worship, then go out the door and live like the world. And then come back in here every Sunday and say, Lord, fix me again. Do you understand the language he's using? They'll say, Lord, Lord. Do you know what that means? That is an intimate thing. That is what... This is so powerful. That is what the bride says when the groom comes in to consecrate the marriage. Lord, Lord. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying a bunch of you are walking around like we've been intimate. But I don't know you. 
this is heavy. But I'm not going to be a weak pastor. I'm going to tell you the word. This is good news you're hearing. Look at Romans, what the apostle Paul talks about. Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Mm -hmm. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex instead, and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. They will experience the wrath. The penalty they deserve. Can I tell you, Jesus does not have any penalties for his bride. Only a marriage feast and rewards. Penalty and judgment comes to the unbeliever. So here's the tough part I want to tell you. And this better, every man in the room that has children, I want you to hear me clearly. The saints that are left, in the, left behind are the ones that played church and realized, man, I got to go to heaven. I'll do whatever it takes. But it's also your children. And let me show you. Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 and 7. The Lord passed in front of Moses calling out Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. Yes, I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin, but I do not excuse the guilty. Mm. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren, and the entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations. So let me just paint this picture for you. Let's say that I fall away from the Lord, and I don't teach my oldest daughter Fallon. And I just go home and tell her how the church has hurt me, how church is fake, how there ain't nobody but a bunch of hypocrites in there and all the pastor wants is our money and they're just trying to build their own empires. And I miss the rapture. You know what happens? My sin is poured into my daughter and she will experience the wrath because of my sin. Parents, you need to get your mind right. You need to raise yourself up and realize he is coming quickly. You need to get them tablets out of your children's faces. You need to get them off of that Netflix and all that bull, that whatever you want to call it. I held myself right there. You saw me. I'm working on me. Yep. And you need to put the Bible or uh, 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 the Superbook is a great show for children to watch. It's on YouTube. Everybody's got internet. Everybody's got a cell phone. And let the word be poured into your kids instead of this world. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you even had a, that much understanding of the wrath of God... You, you, you'd burn everything they had. Yeah, that's right. And men, it's on us. We cannot put that on our wives. The Bible is clear that we shall raise our family. We're talking about Jesus when we go to bed. We're talking about Jesus at the dinner table. We're talking about Jesus when we're going down the road on the way to school. We're talking about Jesus when we're going through the Chick-fil-A drive through line. We're telling our kids about Jesus. When we go down the road, we go, look at the sun. God made that. Do you experience this air? God made that. 
tell you something broke me yesterday. No, it was Friday. Um, I always take my wife out on a date Friday. It's our one night together. And I have my two little girls. I have two girls. One's six and one's four. And uh, they're both precious. They both love the Lord. But my youngest one, Clara, she's very intimate with the Lord. And uh, they love the song, Rest on Us, uh, by Upper Roof. And all Clara goes is, Holy Spirit. <laughs> all right, that's what she's saying. And she tells me, put that song on, Daddy. We don't listen to any secular music. We don't listen to any of that. My kids do not know any secular song. We don't allow that in them. Okay, you can just call me one of them old super Pentecostal people and you're like, Pastor, what's going to happen? Are your girls going to wear blue jean skirts and churn butter? They probably won't wear blue jean skirts, but they might churn the butter because the butter is incredible, Kate. All right? Yeah. Yeah, but here's the deal. Here's what was so precious to me. I was driving down the road and I was talking to the Lord myself. And Fallon said, Daddy, look at Clara. And Clara was in the back seat going, Holy Spirit, rest, with her hands lifted up. Immediately I broke. I said, Lord, thank you for letting me see that. Praise his name. So here's what we talked about. We've talked about the rapture. The word says it's pre-trib. We're out of here. We understand what the rapture is. It is the wrath of God and that we were not appointed to it. We've also talked about that no believer is spared in the tribulation and uh, that we understand who the saints are that are left in the tribulation. So what is the second coming? Because a lot of us get that confused with the rapture. Okay? Here's what you need to know, and I want to show this to you. All right? The second coming, it is not a private thing. It is a public event. Okay? And it begins in the sky. All right? And it ends on God coming on top of a mountain. The rapture begins in the sky, but it's us going up. The second coming, Jesus is coming down. All right? And there is no time of joy. It's a time of mourning. It's a time of judgment. It's when Jesus comes back to rule. The Bible says he comes with a rod and a scepter. And he comes to judge the dead and those who are left alive on the earth. It ain't no good time. And the Bible tells us that we're coming back with him. So if we're coming back with him, how are we going to call us up to him? I'm going to show it to you. Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31. Immediately after the tribulation. Wow. Read that again. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Yeah, that ain't no good time. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from the end of heaven to the other. Okay, so this is important because we get that misunderstood. Well, who's he gathering? He's not gathering nobody from the earth. He says he gathered them from heaven. Why? Because we're all up there for seven and a half years having a marriage feast and getting rewards. And then another trumpet blast happens. He says, get my bride, my wife. She's going to come rule with me. But everything on earth is in utter chaos. I mean, the sky goes dark, for goodness sakes. Listen to what Zechariah prophesied. 
Zechariah chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. And, yes. And your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravished. Mm. Half of the city shall go into captivity. But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. This is the second coming. Okay? I need you to understand that. This is the second. Now listen what happens. This is the second part. Go ahead. And in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, wow. making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. Then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azal. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. Okay. He's coming and who's coming with him? So we're not being called up to him. We're actually coming with him. So this is not the rapture. This is the second coming. Okay. And it is not a good time. I've just read to you pretty uh, detailed verses that tells you that a mountain that are that, that that are hundreds of feet in diameter are split in half that the sun goes black stars fall out the sky like falling off of a fig tree people are running and hiding in utter chaos that is the second coming why is it why, why is it utter chaos because everybody knows the king is in the room and I'm about to be judged. Has there been any person in here by a show of hands that has done something wrong and got caught and knew you were getting a spanking and is going, peace, safety, thank you so much. No, every one of you are doing this. Oh, daddy, my heart just won't spank it, please. Yeah. They all know it's coming, Chris. They're going to get a tail whipping they ain't never had. That is the second coming. Why is it called the second coming? Because it's the second time Jesus comes on the earth and he rules. The first coming was when he come a man and he humbled himself. Okay? And he died for us. And the second time he's going to come on this earth to rule is after the tribulation that's what the scripture said wasn't it okay so let me just show you this I didn't have time to put this on the screen but I want to give you a parallel of the difference between the rapture and the second coming the rapture there is allotment for a seven year wedding feast the second coming there, there's no time here it, it's, it, it happens immediately okay the rapture is for believers the second coming it's going to affect everybody that's on the earth the rapture, it's a time of joy. We're excited. There'll be rewards. The second coming, there ain't no joy. That's mourning. Uh, the rapture, it can happen at any moment. The Bible tells us the second coming explicitly happens after the tribulation. The rapture is a, is a sign that the wrath begins and the second coming is when Jesus comes down to rule for a thousand years. I just want you to know that you do not want to experience the second coming of Jesus. You don't want to experience him. And you know how we don't experience that? Is that we go in the rapture. Okay, this is my last point. And that is this. There's only one way we're going to experience that. And that is through salvation. So what is salvation? Okay, because a lot of us don't even understand what that is. And I don't want you to be in a dark about it no more. 
Salvation is not something that we have. Listen, salvation is also an event. I know some of you are like saying, what? Salvation is an event. It's, here's what the Hebrew definition is. You ready? It is an event that returns you to the maker. It is the event that gives you the way to escape from the wrath of the Lamb. That is powerful. <laughs> so let me show you in Scripture. John, this is, the, you know, we, the most famous Scripture, if you ask somebody to say a Scripture, they're going to use John 3, 16, right? I think the things, the verses 1 through 15 before that are more, even more powerful. This is Jesus talking to Nicodemus. Here we go. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Mm -hmm. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So you must be born again. I love this whole conversation that he's having. Let me, let me, let's finish the conversation. This is verse uh, 13 and 15 through 15, chapter 3. No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus, I love Nicodemus. Nicodemus is saying, what do you mean i got to be born again? How can I, I'm an old man, how can I go back in my mama's womb? <laughs> I know that's kind of funny thinking about it, but he was being sincere but he didn't understand it. Jesus is saying, hey, you got to be born of flesh, but you need your spirit to be born. Because right now, your soul and your flesh is running your life. Your mind, your will, and your emotions, and then your flesh man who only cares about the things of this world is influencing your mind, your will, and your emotions. And you're making decisions based off that. But I want you to be born again. And that spirit man will wake up. And you'll go to try to do something crazy and you'll get that check in your spirit because somebody else is alive in there now. Come on. Man, that's a whole message right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ephesians 4, verse 30. Look at this. This is what the Holy Spirit does for us. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Listen. Remember, He has identified you as His own guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. You what? Will be. It doesn't say that you are. You will be saved. So what are you saying, Pastor? Here's, let me give you proper biblical doctrine now. You ready? When you accept Jesus and it's not a formulated prayer that we tell you to say every week. That is, that's, that's not sal what salvation is about. That's not even born again. Born again is when you get somewhere with the Lord, whether it's in a service, whether you raise a hand, and you make a covenant in your heart with your husband. I'm going to talk about this next week, but you know what it really is? You're saying wedding vows. Has anybody ever stood in front of their wife that they love and just said it to be said and go, ah, I don't mean it? Unfortunately, probably somebody has, but for most of us, no. We're, most of us men, we're in tears. 
We're emotional. Because right now, it's over with, Kate, ain't it? It's our whole heart on the line now. And I'm giving it to you. That's being born again. So when you accept Jesus, you are born again. Then you will experience the walk that we all have to walk, and that's called the walk of sanctification. That is a daily thing that happens to us. Jesus says it this way, pick up your cross and die daily. So daily, I have to get up and I have to choose to pursue him. That is sanctification. And let me explain something to you. The, the walk of the believer is never like this. The walk of the believer is this. Just because you miss the mark don't mean you go back to the starting line. You don't go in a dip. Because we're always being brought up to perfection in Him. Okay? And then when you continue in sanctification and you protect that crown and you don't lose it, when he comes back, you will be saved. That's proper doctor. Amen. Okay? So, I'm closing. Praise God, right? Yeah, I know. Daggone, girl. Yeah, no, I'm messing with you. <laughs> I understand. I appreciate it. I know what you meant. Yeah. So, here's the deal. It matters how you live. I'm telling you this because I'm about to say something here that's really going to rock the whole room because this is a very strategic attack of Satan. And this right here may run people out of here faster than anything else I've said. There is a deception of fear that is in the church, especially when it comes to the mark of the beast. When we went through COVID, I had more people come up to me and say, Pastor, I'm not going to take the vaccine, which I didn't take. That's just my own personal reason. It's okay if you did. All right, so be it. All right, but they said, Pastor, I'm not going to take it. I think it's the mark of the beast. Okay, you, we've heard it, right? We also see stuff on media, people walking up with barcode scanners, mark of the beast, stuff like that. Let me, let me, let me, let me open your eyes to something. The bride of Christ will not experience the mark of the beast. How, do, how can you say that? Because it happens halfway through the tribulation. So we're not appointed to the tribulation. So do not be deceived by Satan. But let me also tell you, don't go out there and live any way you want to live. Don't get back and sit and recline and say, oh, I'm escaping the tribulation. I can live how I want to. And You'll lose your crown. You'll lose it. This is not a message of we're free, we're saved, we can just do it how we want to do. I'm telling you, I showed you a scripture where Jesus himself said, if you don't press forward, you'll lose your crown. Here I'm closing with these two verses. And this is it. And this may be heavy, but stay with me. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 34. But when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit upon His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in His presence, and He will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at His right hand and the goats at His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. Verse 41. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. So I'm closing with this. What side are you going to be on? You're going to be on the side with the sheep 
or you're going to be with the goats. And it ain't a matter of talking. It's a matter of doing. You no longer, listen to me, Jesus said lip service will not get you into heaven. Here's what I want to tell you. This, this message has really convicted me more than I think it has anybody else. Because here's what it's convicted me. Because I've done an in-depth study on the tribulation. And I have not witnessed to one person this week. I have not told one person you're on fire. Your house is on fire. You do not want to go through this. I want to encourage everybody in the room, if you don't know Jesus, if you've been in church, and this ain't a time to bow your head because you don't need to be ashamed of this. If you've been playing church, I want to tell you the good news. And here it is. The good news is we're all justfully should be going to hell. Every one of us. But God's love was so great that he sent his son which is the way of escape from the wrath. But you just have to accept him. And I'm not talking about saying a prayer. I'm talking about a change of life. What I've shared with you today is from the word and it's real and it will happen. So I just want to encourage you right now that if you want to experience the day of salvation, that only happens with a commitment to the Son. Okay? And you're going to have to say some wedding vows. So I want you right now, wherever you are, if that's you, and you say, you know what, Pastor? I need to say that. Is there anybody in here bold enough to say, I've, I've been playing and I need to say that? Anybody? I see you. 